In Swedish, the normal way to change a noun from singular to plural is to either add an ending, as in hestar, or to add nothing at all, as in hus. But there is a small group of nouns where this isn't enough and where the main vowel of the noun changes as well, as in ender. This process is called umlaut, or omjud in Swedish, and is basically the exact same thing as is found in English words like feet, mice, and men. In Swedish, there's a total of 30 basic nouns that have an umlauted plural form. A lot of them are very common words that are essentially impossible not to come across, while some are more obscure and might not always be known by Swedish speakers themselves. In this video, we're gonna look at all of them. Okay, so to begin with, we can combine the umlaut feature with some more regular plural endings to form six different groups. The distribution of the 30 words among the different groups is highly uneven, as you can see here, with most words belonging to the first one. This is a good thing for anyone trying to learn this, because it means that most of the words follow the same pattern, and that the rest can generally be learned as a handful of lexical exceptions. Now, before having a look at the specific words, we should first have a look at the umlaut patterns. Generally, Swedish umlaut is described like this, but due to historical reasons, the last pattern is not relevant for the nouns anymore, as the words that belong to it historically have moved to the O pattern instead. This leaves us with only two umlaut rules for the nouns, and as a piece of good news, these are exceptionless, and all of the 30 nouns follow them without fail. Alright, let's begin. The first group takes umlaut followed by the ending ER. This is the largest of the umlaut groups, consisting of 18 out of the 30 words in question. In alphabetical order, the words are and, bot, brand, hand, land, ledamot, natt, rand, son, spann, spång, stad, stav, stånd, strand, Stong, tand, tong. Okay, so here we have all of them. Now, to make them plural, we're gonna apply umlaut to the last vowel carrying stress, and then add the ending er. And before I say them out loud, I'll also point out that the plural form of all but four umlaut nouns take accent one, so if you wanna train your pitch accent detector, you can try to spot the two words that get accent two here. Okay, so here we go. Ender, böter, bränder, händer, länder, ledamöter, nätter, ränder, söner, spänner, spänger, städer, stäver, ständer, stränder, stänger, tänder, and tänger. If you want to try again for the accents, feel free to pause and rewind to listen to them again. If not, the accent two words are the following, where the first one is in fact entirely predictable, seeing as it's originally a compound word, taking accent two in the singular as well. Now, before moving on, we need to discuss a couple of these words. First of all, the plural forms spänner, spänger, and ständer do have regular alternatives, and many people are probably unaware of the umlauted forms altogether. The word spann is, by the way, one of three regional words for bucket, mostly used in the southern and western parts of Sweden, as you can see here on this roughly drawn map. Also, it's good to know that the words land and stond are neuter words, which is in contrast to every single one of the other umlaut nouns, which are all common gender words. This can be good to keep in mind, since plural endings containing an R are usually restricted to common gender words. We can also note that land and stond only have umlaut plurals in the senses of country and estate. In the senses of garden plot and market booth, their plurals are instead simple, regular zeros. The same thing is the case with the word stav, where the umlaut plural stäver means staves of a cask, and the regular plural stava refers to staffs, rods, poles, and wands. And while the former might be uncommon enough to be ignorable on its own, you will encounter it in the word bukstäver, meaning letters of the alphabet. Okay, next group. This group consists of the three similar looking words bok, fot, and rot, and the only difference in these words from the ones before is that the final consonant is lengthened in the plural. 
So we umlaut the vowel, lengthen the consonant, and add er to get böcker, fötter, and rötter. Then we have the single word bonde. Since it already ends in a vowel, it gets only an r as its ending, and also note that it is the stressed vowel that gets the umlaut. Regarding the pitch accent, this word has accent 2 in the singular, but accent 1 in the plural, which is also predictable, but might still be worth pointing out. So, bunde, bunder. Next up is the AR group, which should be easy to remember due to its femininity, as this group only includes the two words dotter and moder. As with bunde before, it is the stressed vowel that takes the umlaut. Furthermore, the unstressed e's disappear when we add the plural ending ar, which by the way is perfectly regular. Also noteworthy is that both of these words keep their accent too when changed to the plural, which of course is common for words with the ending ar to do. So, dotter, döttrar, moder, mödrar. Here we also need to stop and talk about the form moder. In the indefinite singular, this form is quite old-fashioned and only really occurs in certain compounds like livmoder and modersmål, or in expressions and titles such as moderjord and moder Teresa. In most other contexts, it's been reduced to mor, but this hasn't affected the plural form, so in general usage we get en mor, två mödrar. And of course, it should also be pointed out that the most common word today for mother or mom isn't mor at all, but rather mamma, and in the plural, this word is even more common than the form mödrar. Mor does exist though, so if you want to use it, you can feel entirely free to, and I do so myself, but you should be aware of that many people might regard it as either dialectal or as rather formal. Of course, when it comes to grandmothers, farmor and mormor are the only alternatives, as are the plural forms farmödrar and mormödrar, which, you're absolutely right, is not really consistent. Following this, we have the group taking umlaut only, without any ending whatsoever. The words are broder, fader and man. The two former are just like moder in that their indefinite singular forms are pretty much always avoided in favor of the shorter forms bror and far, except in certain compounds or titles such as broderskap, anfader and brodertuk. Also the word far is nowadays generally less common than the alternative pappa, whose usage exactly mirrors that of mamma, as I mentioned earlier. For bror, there is no such alternative, and both the singular and the plural form are used without hesitation by virtually everyone. So, for the plural of these two, we add umlaut on the stressed vowel and change the accent from two to one, but do nothing else. Broder, bröder. Fader, fäder. As for the word man, we only add umlaut and then we're done. Man, men. Although it's worth pointing out that this is a semi-irregular spelling, and that in a more perfect world, both words would be written with two ends. The final group doesn't really take any ending either, but instead distinguishes itself by lengthening the final consonant. The words in this group are gos, lus, and mus, with the plural forms yes, lus, and mus, with the vowels shortened as a result of the consonant being lengthened. And just to point it out, the change in pronunciation of the letter G is in fact not irregular at all, but is a natural consequence of the shift in vowels. And so, that's all 30 of them. But as I've already hinted at, those 30 words are the basic words taking umlaut in the plural. What I mean by this is that there's also compounds taking umlaut, but that I haven't counted, because they're all related to the basic words already shown. For example, we have words that I've already mentioned like bokstäver, livmödrar and anfäder, and a whole ton of others like morötter, bladlös, storstäder, gräsänder, mjölktänder and parkeringsböter. The point is of course that you don't need to worry about any special treatment here since they simply follow the declension of the relevant main word that you've already seen. The only exception to this is the word smörgås, meaning sandwich, where the historical connection to gås has quite obviously been lost, and as a result it's instead developed a regular plural form smörgåsar. 
A few other words show the same tendency, but aren't quite there yet, and in these cases the umlauted form is generally preferred, but depending on who you ask, a regular AR plural might be fine as well, or maybe even better. The main such words are kofot datamus and linslus in decreasing order of acceptance for the alternative form in the written standard language. Also, interestingly enough, words can also go in the opposite direction. For example, fotnot and följetong are often incorrectly pluralized as fotnötter and följetänger, often jokingly, but the forms are still common enough to make some people unsure about what the correct form is actually supposed to be. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that you keep following this channel for new videos about Swedish grammar and much more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in another video.